This is Phobos, the largest of the Martian moon duo and hands down the more interesting of the two. Sorry Deimos. Now there's a lot to talk about when it comes to this fascinating little moon, so this video will cover just the basics as well as one critical aspect. The fact that Phobos is DOOMED! However, here are just a few of the phenomenal Phobian features that I'll cover in the near future. The Hollow Phobos Hypothesis, the mystery of the Phobian grooves, the Phobos monolith, and colonising Mars via missions to Phobos. Now let's crack on with Phobos 101. Phobos was discovered by astronomer Asaph Hall on the 18th of August 1877, six days after he had discovered the other Martian moon of Deimos. Using a 26-inch refractor telescope situated at the US Naval Observatory in Foggy Bottom, Washington DC, Hall had spent many a night trying to find anything orbiting the infamous red planet. He was about to give up, but persevered thanks to encouragement from his wife, Angelina, and discovered not one, but two moons in the course of a week. Based on a suggestion from Henry George Madden, Phobos is named after the Greek god of the same name. Phobos is the son of Ares and Aphrodite, the Greek versions of Mars and Venus. Also, Phobos is the personification of fear and horror. So where did Phobos come from? Much like the Earth's moon, there's a fair amount of controversy around the origins of Phobos. This potato-shaped moon has the dimensions of 27 by 22 by 18, a low mass, and a very unreflective surface, meaning it looks like a typical member of the asteroid belt. In fact, it looks so much like an asteroid, that's not even a photo of Phobos, it's actually one of Vesta. But you couldn't tell the difference, because they all look identical. Thanks for the joke, John Oliver. Since Phobos, and also Deimos, look like asteroids, surely they're just strays from the asteroid belt captured in the Martian orbit, right? Perhaps, but there's many things about these moons that say otherwise. You see, captured moons almost always have irregular orbits. In other words, orbits which are highly elliptical, inclined, distant, and quite often retrograde. But the orbits of Phobos and Deimos are the complete opposite of this. Almost perfect circles aligned with the Martian equator. Now, assuming these moons are captured asteroids and initially had irregular orbits, over time the Martian atmosphere and its axial rotation would have stabilised the orbits of Phobos and Deimos, placing them in the circular ones we see today. However, calculations show that the current Martian atmosphere is way too thin and could not have provided enough atmospheric drag to slow down Phobos and place it in its current orbit. So if it's not a captured asteroid, where did Phobos come from then? Another theory suggests that Phobos came from Mars itself. Similar to the giant impact hypothesis regarding the origins of our own moon, some astronomers have suggested that Phobos, and also Deimos, formed from the debris that was flung up into space after a massive impact on Mars. Unlike the capture theory, this explanation has a lot of evidence to back it up. First off, Mars is covered in craters, some of which are big enough to be classed as basins, i.e. the aftermath of a massive impact. Turning our attention back to Phobos and using thermal imaging, this little moon appears to be mainly made up of something called phyllosilicates, a type of mineral that is mainly found on the Martian surface. Plus, Phobos has a high porosity of 30%. In other words, it's full of voids and caverns, like a sponge made of rock. Now, the vast majority of asteroids in the asteroid belt are more solid than this, and it's quite likely that if Phobos were an asteroid captured in the Martian orbit, then the gravitational pull of the red planet would have pulled the moon apart as it was stabilising its orbit. However, Mars will indeed destroy Phobos at some point in the future. <laughs> You see, Phobos' orbit is shrinking by just under 2 centimetres every Earth year. Now this may not seem like a lot, but over millions of years, those 2 centimetres chipping away at the orbit will add up to thousands of kilometres. Currently Phobos is orbiting, on average, 9,376 kilometres from the centre of Mars. That's 2.76 Mars radii, by the way. But in 30 to 50 million years, when the Phobian orbit is down to 2.1 Mars radii, the gravity of Mars will tear this tiny moon apart. So what's causing Phobos's orbit to shrink? The answer in short? Tidal forces, the gravitational pull of a planet on its moon, and vice versa. Now as Phobos orbits Mars, it pulls a little bit of the surface towards the moon. This is called a tidal bulge. This wouldn't be an issue if Phobos was in what is known as a synchronous orbit, i.e. one that has the same orbital period of the planet's axial rotation. But Phobos is in fact a speedy little bugger that orbits Mars three times in a single Martian day. This means that the tidal bulge caused by Phobos is constantly lagging behind this rapid moon. The net result of these forces acting on the moon cause a slight decay in its orbit, as well as a tiny but truly insignificant increase in the axial rotation speed of Mars. Oh, and by the way, the size of that tidal bulge caused by Phobos on the Martian surface is so small, it's practically not even there. 
So fear not, there isn't a rogue, Phobos-induced hill tearing across the circumference of Mars three times a day. So when the orbit of Phobos has decayed to the 7,000 kilometer mark, it will have passed what is known as the Roche limit of the moon, and it will be torn apart. Black. Now this again is to do with tidal forces. You see, the closer a moon gets to a planet, the gravitational pull on the nearest planet-facing side of the moon becomes much stronger than the opposite far side of the moon. The Roche limit is when the difference in pull between the near and far sides is greater than the moon's own gravitational pull. Now given that Phobos's gravitational pull is 0.0057, about 1700 times smaller than that of the Earth, it doesn't take a whole lot of force to exceed the moon's Roche limit and pull it apart like a loaf of bread. However, it's not all doom and gloom, as Phobos will still be around after it's been destroyed. Well, sort of. You see, models predict that the remnants of Phobos will continue to float around Mars in a ring formation, turning it into a mini, less gassy version of Saturn. But much like Phobos, this ring won't be around forever. After a hundred million years, the debris of this broken up moon will rain down on the very planet that destroyed it, exacting its revenge in the form of a fiery hellstorm of meteorites. Which is quite fitting for the personification of fear and horror when you think about it. 